Crochet B here. Just keep your eyes on the road. I'm driving, so I can't be looking at you the whole time. So don't think it's I'm ignoring you. I'm also driving. We're coming back from Victoria from Sandy's uh, two-week follow-up um, for surgery. So I've been meaning to get this little tail from the carpet trail out for a while, and I got to do it now because next week we're going to have a very special Christmas edition of Tales from the Carpet Trail. But this week I wanted to talk about um, just life and stuff. I mean, as I'm sure all of you know, uh, Sandy and I have been through a bit of a rough time this last little while with uh, first losing Odie and then Sandy surgery and everything. So sometimes it just seems like life piles on a little bit and you feel a little down. And um, one of the nice things about uh, what I do is I get to meet a lot of people while I'm out working and see other people that are going through some of their stuff on their own and it, it kind of puts your own troubles in a little bit of perspective. So I want to tell you about um, a job I, day I had in Duncan about three weeks ago. I worked for two different people. So, you know, we're thinking that life is pretty rough for us because of all we're going through. But um, things are looking up for us. You know, Sandy's got a good checkup today. Her foot is actually looking uh, pretty good. The doctor was pretty happy and she is getting better. Uh, we also got a nice surprise when Tia showed up to pitch in and help out, which takes a lot of pressure off me as I'm still trying to go out and work and make money as best I can because I'm coming into my January, February, which for me is always uh, my slowest time of the year. So you try to make hay while you can. Anyway, I had a day out at Duncan, and the first place I went to uh, was a couple, older couple, they were probably in their mid-60s. So I walk into their house, and it looked like a baby explosion had gone off. All you could see was diapers and baby bottles and just baby stuff all over the house. You would not have believed it. It was unbelievable. And these two people, these two folks were pretty much the two tiredest people I think I've ever seen in my life. They look absolutely exhausted like they've been dragged behind a train or something. And their story was, was a sad story. Um, two weeks beforehand, before this day, they had had to go to court and sue their daughter for custody of their three grandchildren. I guess the daughter had some kind of a problem. So anyway, they are now raising three little kids. Get this, age three years old, age 19 months old, and age three months old. So I go in there, they're each holding a baby or a toddler, and the other kids running all over the place. And these guys look absolutely done. And the lady was saying to me, like, um, you know, she never thought that this would be how she was spending her retirement years, having to raise three little kids. And I just thought, like, holy smokes. Um, and she said, I don't know how we're going to do this. And she's telling me this. And they're only two weeks in, and they're already looking tired and this guy is looking like he's ready to run out the door any second. So I got thinking about that and I realized that, you know, um, we're having our problems and stuff with uh, Sandy's foot. But the good news is that is going to end one day. And, uh, you know, she's getting better every day. And eventually it's all going to be over and we're going to be just fine. But these two poor old folks, they're going to be looking after these children probably for the rest of their lives so it kind of made me realize that my shit you know really isn't all that difficult compared to what some other people have going on so i was kind of really really um blown away and stuff when i left that place i was just shaking my head like i could not believe um, the situation these people were in i actually phoned sandy right after and was telling her about them i just couldn't believe that so I went from that place to the very next place I went to, and I went in on to this fellow, nice guy, and uh, he's uh, he's in a wheelchair, and you go into his house, 
and all you see was not a baby explosion but trophies from wall to wall ceiling to floor this guy was a competitive athletical kind of guy very much sort of after my own heart and he had trophies from national international motocross racing drag racing car racing like you name it this guy was a winner he's a racer he's a competitor and his wife actually was not there because she was away on a big uh, motocross race in california so this guy's whole life is geared around um you know his passions for sports and racing and winning and all of that and now he's in a wheelchair so you know i was feeling kind of bad for him and you know you, you have to ask like so like were you in an accident did you crash one of your race cars is this why you're you're in the wheelchair and he said no i was um i had a, a condition and uh, i had to get basically a life-saving operation the doctors told me this operation would save my life but there was a 25 percent chance that i would be paralyzed so in his mind there was no decision to be made he wanted to live so he went for the operation and unfortunately for him he now is paralyzed from the waist down so i said boy i, I feel really bad for you because i know that you're a real active hard charging guy and it used to lose to lose the use of your legs must be really difficult for you and i said so you know so what now kind of thing and he looked at me and he smiled and he said he says oh i'm fine i'm modifying uh one of my drag race cars so i can uh, drag race using hand controls and i'm going to be racing in a couple of weeks so this thing did not stop this guy at all he just modified his situation to make the best out of a deal that most people would be depressed and down and whatever and this guy just took it as another challenge and just a way to move forward so i went from you know devastated by this one couple to being so inspired by this man who didn't let something like the loss of the use of his legs stop him from being the person that he wanted to be so that was very inspirational so i guess if there's a moral of the story it's that uh, you know life goes on things for us are really not too bad we love each other we're together sandy will get better we will take care of each other we do have some family that's able to help and uh, you know a few months from now we'll be good so you know this guy he's going to go on to his life and, and modify it to adjust to be to live his life to the fullest and i think that's a really good lesson and i feel bad for the older couple but i did say to them you know thank god for you if it wasn't for you guys your three grandchildren would probably be in foster care so they are doing something really really important it is really going to matter and hopefully they will adjust so that they're not quite so tired and they'll find some ways to get their situation out so anyway that's my story it's not really funny or interesting or whatever but it's funny how you can run into people that are going through some everyday real life stuff and it just kind of helps to uh, put your own stuff in the perspective so uh, you know we're gonna be fine thank you everybody for all the well wishes Sandy's been overwhelmed with all the support and the cards and the gifts and everything it certainly lets her know that she's not alone out there that you guys are all there for her and uh, we're gonna soldier on you know she's getting a little bummed at being at home and not getting out but actually she has gotten out the last two days she is able to get out if somebody drives and get on the good old tominator and get around the mall and do a little bit of stuff so she's gonna be okay anyway look for my special Merry Christmas, uh, Tales from the Carpet Trail next week. I'm sure you guys are going to like it. So we'll see you then. Bye, guys.